Well, today I'm going to do some uh, uh, drawing with sanguine uh, in the Renaissance tradition uh, on uh, uh, a Renaissance paper with no name, <laughs> nameless paper. But anyway, it's a paper that uh, was actually being made during the Renaissance, uh, Michelangelo mm -hmm. and Leonardo. Uh, so that's what I'm going to show you. And uh, I'm also giving, going to give you a quick tour of the studio and and show some of my drawings on the wall behind me here. Yes, here, here we are uh, in my studio again, and uh, I'm going to do you a quick little tour around the place so you can see right. what, what it's all about. Uh, these are, this is a full working studio, teaching studio. Uh, this is a lot of my work back here. Uh, these are some of what I'm going to be teaching today. Uh, the sanguine technique, this, this happens to be on a panel, but uh, uh, here is a, uh, another one on a panel. Uh, I'm going to be working on a uh, laid uh, paper, tone paper. Can, can you explain for people who might not know what sanguine is, would you explain that? Yeah, this is a... Uh, this is a well. I, I'm I'm going to explain all the materials when I sit down to draw. But uh, okay. you know, I've got several varieties of uh, sanguine material. Uh, but it's a red chalk that they used in the Renaissance a lot, <clears throat> and Michelangelo used it for all of his drawings for his frescoes. And uh, uh, it's just it's just a beautiful medium uh, that uh, I've I've become very very fond of. So as you can see, all the Socrates, all the usual suspects. Uh, here's a TV. We do a lot of slide presentations at our workshop. Uh, our little our little company store here. Uh, here we have our friend uh, with all of her like little landmarks on on her hair, and uh, we'll get a nice uh, panoramic of the studio here, so you can kind of see. Uh, we have a, a, a raised stage, uh, and it's 360. It may be probably is the only. 360 stage uh, in uh, the DFW area. This certainly is the best uh, facility in the DFW area for teaching figure drawing and, and portraiture and anatomy, for that matter. Now, tell me a little bit about that, Michael. Do you have uh, do you have regular ongoing classes? Do people sign up for a, a full course, or, or do they become members? What's that all like? Well, I have two. I have two different programs. One is uh, an open studio. Uh, that goes on at the same time as my men mentoring program. Uh, and obviously, in the open studio, they can come and uh, draw without instruction, or they can uh, pay a little bit more, and I, I teach. So there's two different, two different groups. Now, here's, uh, here's our board that, uh, that I use. I've got a massive blackboard here that I use for... Uh, famous blackboard. Yeah, I use for teaching... Uh, my workshops. Uh, this is all. This stuff is all done from imagination. Uh, and uh, these two guys, we I need to get them out more for a meal, but uh, uh, they've been hanging with the studio for a long time uh, as well. Um, and this is where I'm going to uh, to draw from today. Uh, I have a massive mess of supplies over here that uh, uh, that I. <laughs> I've collected over the years. I have I have more art supplies probably than any man alive. You know, so uh, I think I can say that probably with some some <laughs> validity. Well, if you just bought one thing a year for every year of your life, you'd have more than any man alive. This is true. This is true. <laughs> so uh, I'm going. I often draw drawings from paintings, or paintings. I do paintings from drawings. Uh, it's. Uh, makes the selection process uh, uh, more challenging. So uh, uh, I'm not trying to duplicate anything, really. I'm, I'm just trying to interpret it. Uh, and usually in a drawing like this, even though that's uh, a Van Dyke drawing and he was pretty damn good, uh, I will try to even make my, my character stronger uh, than, than that drawing. Uh, Fashion uh, is famous for... Uh, uh, really adding a lot of character to his uh, his portrait work. You know, uh, if you really see the people that Fetchin was actually drawing, they they he, he really emphasized if somebody had larger ears, he 
overemphasize that a little bit. So uh, didn't take away from the drawing. I mean, they're great drawings, uh, uh, but he just uh, put a lot more character in it. Uh, even Sargent put more character into it than, than, than people realize. So let me uh, lay my team down here and get started. All right. I want to remind you guys that we have a, a Fine Art Connoisseur subscription available. If you leave a comment, and we'd like to see where you're watching from, uh, we will sometimes call out people from all over the world who are watching. So tell us where you're watching from. A lot of people already. Now, uh, how do people find your studio if they're in Dallas or they want to come to Dallas and study with you? Uh, it's michaelmetler.com. Is that correct? Or is there another... There's a, a Michael Mettler dot guru. Really? Okay. That's uh, that's for our newsletter. And there is a there is a Michael Mettler dot com as well. Okay. And then uh, tell me about the name of the school. What's well, the Society of Figurative Arts? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So what I've done here, this is a tone paper. Uh, uh, and this particular company uh, was founded in 1264. Uh, so it was around when all of these folks were around. I started out with uh, uh, unsharp material to, uh, to lay all this in. And then I uh, dusted down. Uh, I like this little shaving brush I use a lot to, 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 to dust these down. And this creates a patina on the paper. And then uh, I can go back in and... Uh, uh, start pulling out some lights. Uh, I start with the nose. Uh, I'm famous for saying the nose is a great place to hang a face. Uh, I didn't actually come up with that. That's, a, that's something that's, that I, I graciously stolen from Charles Bragg. So you're using an eraser right now? I'm using an eraser. I use an eraser a lot as a drawing tool to pull out my lights. And uh, you'll see how it starts to make these things very dimensional very, very quickly. And sometimes I just kind of rough up the whole area. Uh, and these, these lace things are kind of fun. You, on, on doing this lace stuff, uh, really, in, instead of trying to uh, mimic uh, everything that's there, uh, what I try to do is, is uh, uh, understand how, how these folds are made going back and forth. You know, so if, if I were actually making them, uh, how, how I would be bending these flutes uh, around uh, and just giving a, an impression of that. Uh, so. Well, there's a whole, there's a whole course you could take just on doing folds. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So this is, uh, uh, this is, you know, like I say, I use these drawing uh, sticks to start with, <clears throat> and then I use uh, 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 these Credicolor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned the name. I use these. Uh, you you can mention the name. We have no problem with that. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. So I use all the usual suspects from, you know, all the all the big names, so Sennelier and Rembrandt and all those guys. But this is a, this is a. Uh, uh, dry uh, credit color uh, so I always go back to the nose most people don't under, don't know that the nose actually opens up there that there, there's not actually a line there can we see if we can get the camera closer I know it's tough because it's over your shoulder that's so much easier. Yeah, thank you. So it's a selection process. You know, you don't really, uh, master draftsmen really don't try to put in everything that they see. As a matter of fact, uh, I really don't refer to that a whole lot after the initial uh, lay in and uh, uh, you know, I, I will get not an exact likeness, but I will try to, to emphasize, uh, I don't, I don't even view, uh, exaggerate as a, as a 
bad word. Uh, let's come in here and, and build a couple. You know, if you build a couple of these uh, and make, make them very believable, uh, half your work's done. In other words, you don't have to render them all. You just have to render a couple of them so that every the, the brain kind of fills in the rest. That's correct. <clears throat> now, talk to uh, talk to us about the value of copying old masters. Well, um, what they taught in the uh, Renaissance workshops. <clears throat> uh, you know, how Leonardo and Michelangelo learned is that they worked from their master's works. I need a drink of water here. <clears throat> they worked from their master's works and from other uh, master's works that uh, were in their master's collection. Uh, they learned um, what I would call aspective views of things. In other words, if they were doing a figure they, they would learn from memory uh, a, a dozen or so different poses. Uh, once, once Michelangelo did the uh, Sistine ceiling, uh, uh, the world changed because before that, before that there was a very limited number of uh, poses that, uh, that these guys worked with. So uh, each time I go through this, it adds a little bit more of the patina uh, you can see the kind of laid finish there. You, know, you can actually uh, rub some of that in to the finish if you want. But the advantage of working on these laid papers, I know a lot of people uh, these days use these uh, straighter uh, or smoother papers because uh, they photograph well for Facebook and, and, and Instagram. Uh, the problem is uh, they're not as graphic in person. So... Uh, this, this, this type of paper allows you to really pull out uh, you know, little, little highlighted areas. So are you saying it's got a lot of tooth to it? Yeah, it's got a laid finish. You see this, this linear finish? And this, yeah. this, you know, all the papers, in the, uh, most of the papers in the Renaissance, if they were, paper, if they were made, uh, had this kind of a finish. Uh, so. What kind of paper is that you're using? Well, this is a, uh, I'm glad you asked that because uh, uh, Pierre would thank you. Uh, this is a Fabriano Roma. It's a handmade paper. It actually takes six, six individuals to uh, manipulate the screens and everything to make this paper. It's rather expensive. Uh, it's, not, it's not something you're going to be using for everyday work. Well, what people don't understand about Fabriano, I, I had um, lunch with the CEO and Pierre one time. And they have three different lines. So they have the line that you find in most of the art stores, which is still very, very good paper. Then they have another line that's a higher level than that. Then they have all the handmade papers, which are kind of reserved for people like you who, who really are you know, looking for the, the very, very finest. So I wanted to uh, show you this and... Uh... And I've really carved these lines rather than trying to really do delicate lines uh, all the time. I, I go back and carve these lines down. Uh, I don't really use a, a sharpened instrument that much, uh, particularly in the beginning. And, and here I've just used the, uh, the, uh, the uh, credit color. Uh, but here's, a, here's a, a, another chalk that I like. Uh, this one you would have to go online to find. It's, it's called Pippo's. Uh, P -I, P -I -P -P. Yeah, P-I-P-O, Pippo. Uh, this, is, this is made to, to mimic how uh, Conte used to feel many years ago. But you can see it is a darker uh, consistency. And so now I can come in and clean up some of this detail. So uh, what I'm trying to say is I use... Uh, in painting uh, and in drawing, I use a material that's pretty pretty broad in the beginning, uh, and and you know you got to watch not to have the uh, uh, eyes and ears start to expand. Uh, ears, a third of the ears in shadow coming across here. So a lot of times I would just do a linear kind of hatching in this 
of this stuff to get this kind of tone in there. Of course, your lips have tone in them. Uh, you've got a little light coming out from there. Um, you can find the angle of the eyes from here. I can find the, that top lid, and I can find this top lid over here. So there's all kinds of little systems to, to get this stuff working for you. Uh, people under underestimate these brows, but th that, that gives you a lot of character. This Are you using a darker one now? Yeah, I'm using a darker one. So uh, when I started started to say the actual materials that uh, uh, that they used in the Renaissance uh, aren't even available anymore. Those uh, uh, sanguine these are, this is a mine this is a stone uh, sanguine is a is a mineral and uh, uh, the original ones that uh, uh, Mike and Leo and the boys used uh, those have been extinct for years and they would have several varieties of that stone some softer, some harder, some dark, some light, uh, and they would use, you know, multiple uh, elements. Now, I like to break these lines with a little hatching from the, uh, the uh, eraser, and then go back in and clean it all up. So uh, then, then uh, once I've used this particular uh, equipment, uh, I also can now come in and use uh, the white chalks to fill in some of this. Can I ask the camera operator to try to get closer again, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, pick up a little bit here. Down here. And once again, uh, I do a lot with erasers, so. And take a bunch out with a needed eraser. Also, there's another tool that I use, um, which I don't know where it went. My chamois, no. Oh, um, I use a, a, a chamois, chamois, uh, a lot of times to pull out value as well as you can see that it kind of cleans that up and this is this this saves your needed eraser a lot uh, because you're getting a lot of the a lot of the unnecessary chalk off of there uh, on the chamois uh, so you don't have to use your needed eraser quite so much the question was is there was that a pastel pencil for your white or was that chalk well that's that's a that's a creative color uh, uh, Pastel pencil. So okay. that's, this is this actually is fabric pastel, but uh, Creative Color makes it. This is this is a Creative Color uh, five point six millimeter lead, which I use a lot, and uh, uh, I like I like things in extenders a lot too. Yeah, but, uh, you don't initially if, if if you look at Peter Paul Prudhomme for example, uh, he was very very loose in his initial laying of his lights. And of course, you know, he, he ends up with pretty refined looking stuff. I, I like to break all of these things, all these lines up some. Would you uh, explain that to people, why you break things up? Uh, well, I just, uh, you know, I don't like things to feel like they have lines around them. There's nothing in nature that actually has a line around it. So uh, I try to, uh, uh, you know, for for instance, here, here would be a little place right here. Uh, that I would I would probably just let that go here go out of out of frame here, and there's another little technique that's called passage, uh, that you make things go in front of things. Like here, if I wanted this to go in front of that, I would just cut out a little little chunk right there. Uh, I might cut out a a little piece down here to let that go in front of that, and it's just giving you dimension. Uh, I like to find little little points in in the drawing that uh, uh, are can be like little accents. Um, sometimes I, I would do, you know, the Russians all do this. I will find where, where this is coming across and where this corner is right here. Uh, and I would even make like a little X maybe there. 
find out where the corner of that mouth is, make a little X there, make a little X there, make a little X there. So I'm just kind of, you know, uh, I would let this uh, lace go behind his ear with that little break. It gives, gives you more depth, you know. Um, so uh, on, on something like this, uh, this, this actually, this line belongs to his cheek. So this is going over uh, the edge there. And, uh, you know, there's something else. How much time do I have, Eric? I want to show you a couple of Oh, you got plenty of time. Okay. So uh, so the important thing here to emphasize is that I kind of take this to a certain point and people are going to groan because uh, once I get some things going on here, then I would go back to my brush, take some of this stuff back. And start building it again. So each time I start building it, uh, I'm going to go back with uh, a little bit of more information on some of these key points, like this eyelid, for instance, I would see the inside of this. Now, this is a Carbofello chalk pencil. It's a little softer than some of the other stuff. But also what I have found, Michael, I'm curious your opinion on this, is I found in looking at a lot of old old uh, drawings and old paintings uh, that the eyes are really a lot softer than our tendency is to make them. Yes, they are. Uh, because you have to remember that this is really in shadow. Okay, and people... People tend to forget that, unless, and and, uh, and and these do not uh, mimic each other. And as a matter of fact, what, what people don't really do sometimes is, is leave that little bit of light in that eye. But you have to remember that there is an eye socket back here. So I always treat this like uh, this guy's got like on little uh, goggles, li little uh, aviator uh, <laughs> glasses like that. Uh, and, you know, and I really soften this away eye quite a bit because uh, I really don't want the focus there so much. Uh, but here I need to emphasize this brow. So uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make is I use several different kinds of, uh, of pencils with several, several different colors uh, of chalk in them. Uh, this, uh, this happens to be a, uh, and also a dark one that's made by, by General. So, uh, the old masters did this and uh, uh, used multiple layers of materials, and uh, you know, then you bring it back so, so it all looks like it all belongs together, uh, and start the whole process over. So it's uh, uh, it's it's a building process. I wanted to show you here. Um, oh, uh, people people tend to. Uh, think about uh, drawing as uh, using one type of media, but they often would take and go back in and create some stronger things. This is, this is a blending tool uh, that's uh, basically, basically water-based, but you could come and come and really pick up some of these you know, rather than just just relying on the chalk itself you can pick up some of these more subtle you know i could even come in here and, and kind of pick up some of this hatching for the for his beard so, you have a fun job <laughs> yeah So, so it's not, uh, uh, it's a little strange. Has it going more dark over there? All right, need some light in there. So, um, go back to my lights. I'll find my eraser here. There we go. There it is. 
Yeah, so I'm going to make this uh, darker by making this lighter. A lot, a lot of times you, you deal with what's next to something to create the effect you want with uh, that cheek. Uh, so this, this needs to be, you know, I'll probably come back with some, some uh, And once again, I'm, I'm back to the nose because, uh, you know, this is uh, really one of my key focal points. So uh, this customized, this Fabriano paper that you're using, is this something that you have to order? Is it something you can get in certain art stores? You know, it's really in short supply right now. Yeah, everything uh, is. <laughs> you know, this this last batch I've got uh, from uh, McPherson's, uh, which you know supplies uh, all the big stores, the Blick and all the people. Uh, they only had eight sheets. Wow! And so I took them all. So unfortunately, uh, uh, they're not going to be available for a while. Uh, well, we're honored that you would use one of them today for us. Yeah, well, this is a fourth of a sheet. Uh, you know, I could uh, tell you the cost. It's, it's, it's. Uh, uh, I think it's like twenty-seven dollars, twenty-nine dollars a sheet. Wow. Well, it must be worthwhile. Otherwise, you wouldn't spend it. Well, I like it a lot. Uh, uh, so, for for people who can't get access to that, what would you recommend? Oh, uh, they they make a an angra paper. Uh, uh, and there's several brands of angry paper uh, out there that are, that are pretty good. Uh, Hanamil makes a good one. Uh, you know, Fabriano makes a good one. Uh, the Fabriano one right now, they're, I'm trying to get them to, you know, I know Jacques very well too uh, with uh, Fabriano. Uh, I assume he's still the president. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had lunch with him in Paris not too many years ago. Um, they sponsored a, a really nice uh, tour when he was with uh, another paper company. A really nice tour tour of the uh, of the Louvre, private tour at night. That was beautiful. You get to hang out with all the big shots. <laughs> or they get to hang out with me. One or the other. <laughs> well, that's the right attitude. Well, I found that uh, uh, that my a lot of my peers uh, respect my approach. Uh, there are some that uh, uh, are diametrically opposed to it, but uh, well, that's what makes the world go around. It is. It certainly is. So, once again. This is what brings it all back to the same realm. I'm going to have to break this line up over here on this side. And I can kind of do that. Uh, this uh, kind of hatching on this down plane here a little bit. And I'm going to build that up a little bit. Kind of, uh, when do you do your life drawing classes? Is this frequently? Well, we're doing, we're doing them on Fridays right now. And they're, they're Fridays from uh, 10, 1030 to, uh, to, uh, to 130 or to 230. I'm sorry. Anybody in the uh, audience from Dallas or the Dallas area, say so in the comments.
Yeah, we didn't really have a whole lot of time to uh, to advertise for uh, for our folks. Uh, yeah, it's uh, t it's uh, t sofa t s o f a dot com. That'll give them the information. T I'm ready for the comments. Okay. This this is a shaving brush. Uh, there are all kinds of brushes that, that that I've developed over the years. This is just a cut off. Uh, softer kind of a brush uh, and all this is allowing me to do is, is to soften some of these uh, harder lines that, that I don't want to come come forward too much and then it allows me the opportunity to, now to go back in and rebuild my highlights you know, where I want a lot of strength to come in the brow here for instance this 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 I view I, I often use the bathtub analogy if you're laying in your bathtub or you're laying in the swimming pool and your you, your your head is submerged uh, and then you start to bring your head up out of the uh, uh, submerged area then you're going to uh, what you're going to see first is going to be uh, you know your nose your forehead then your cheekbones and so rather than relying too much on on what I'm looking at over there See, if I take that line out there, you know it's going in here and it's going to start up back down there, so I don't really have to have it that much. Uh, so you use line where something is happening that's, uh, that you're fond of. Uh, and uh, uh, I've got another. This is a... Uh, this is something I think I bought back in the 80s. They don't make them anymore, but it's really kind of a nice little brass tool because you have one of the uh, credit color uh, sanguine on one end and then you have the uh, white on the other end. So yeah, I have one of those. I think actually you may have given me one. I might have, yeah. Uh, I knew I used to have another one. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, the nice thing that then if you have this then you can come back in and if you look at this actual painting the real painting i can't tell it from this but this this forehead is really heavily heavily painted and then not quite as much bridge there and then here you would have the opportunity for a highlight uh, here, you would have a little bit of light. This is going to be more in shadow than I'm seeing it. So I'm going to pull this back some. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Uh, I need to take a quick break, but one, one thing I'd like you to do when we come back, if you wouldn't yeah. mind, is give us a little, little tiny demonstration on the points of the face. And I know you touched on it, but if you, I think that's so important. And I know you go into depth in your video, and I'm not going to ask you to go into depth, but if you would do that when we get back, would that be cool? That's great. Yeah, sure. All right, great. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right, we'll be right back. So our guest today is the great Michael Mettler. Uh, obviously, you figured out that he's great already. He's incredible. He has a fabulous video. It's called uh, Figure Drawing in the Renaissance Tradition. And there's so much to learn there. And he did such a great job. We, we even constructed a, a chalkboard for him in the studio so that he could do it. And uh, it's something that you really, you would get benefit of. But whether, um, whether, whether you're doing figures or portraits or otherwise, doing the figure drawing uh, exercises are so important. Okay, so we, we wanted to kind of pinpoint some of the points that I look for. Uh, I divide this uh, head into five eyes, an eye between eyes, and that gives me my brow point over here. And then I know that I have this. What do you mean five eyes? You said five. Yeah, uh, well, the five-eyed line is uh, is the art school. There's an eye between eyes, okay? So I'm, I'm allowing for the, the, an eye to be there and an eye to be here, and then this eye takes me over to my ear, okay? 
Oh, okay. And well, see I where had, I wake up and do every day. I didn't. I didn't realize there was one eye distance to the to the. Well, ear. and the the old Leonardo uh, dimension goes from the brow line to the uh, hairline, one third, one third to the bottom of the nose, and one third to the chin. Of course, this guy's got a little bit of beard under here, so we're going to deal with that. But uh, uh, and uh, uh, here here's what I do a lot of as I I will put this. Uh, uh, temporal bone in there and come around and find the edge of this eye socket and then the top of the zygmatic arch then I come down here and find the bottom of the zygmatic arch so I, I understand all of these muscle groups underneath here uh, you know of course then I have my uh, big master muscle and my jaw bone coming down and then I, this this is uh, what I call the uh, Francis McDermott uh, muscle uh, that comes around here and comes up and forms these pillars underneath this jawbone. So uh, this is how, you know, some of the initial lay-in that I, that I would do to make this all work. And of course, of course, you have a brow up here that does this. And then this kind of comes up and cuts that off. And then this kind of goes around your top of your eye socket. Uh, and then this divides like so comes back around, comes back down. So I know this whole structure of this head uh, and so did in this guy because they studied all of this. Uh, and you go through all of that in your video, you, you go through a lot of that depth. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, once again, I want to emphasize that these guys worked <clears throat> from master drawings and master paintings a lot more than they did from nature. Uh, it, uh, Leonardo is often misquoted uh, as saying, go out and learn, uh, go out and learn the lessons of nature. But then he, if you read the rest of it, it says, so you can take it back to the studio and utilize the information. Uh, not, not to copy, it's not, not copying nature. Uh, you have to, the one school of thought, you know, particularly uh, you were talking about the site size thing is that, is that if you work site size accurately that you can uh, 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 virtually draw anything. Uh, you can up to a point, but you can't do convincing sailing vessel unless you know how that is, all the rigging is tied and all, all of the, I mean, you have to know a lot about, about something to be able to really draw it uh, in an excellent manner. I mean, another sip of water. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I, I like to take some of these areas and, and just randomly hatch through them. You know, a lot of times I would do this with just the eyes to take them back and soften them. Uh, I might just take off this, pull off the side of this face to make that all kind of soften. Uh, so I hope this is helpful on some of how I work. Uh, Michael, Angie, Carter Coleman in the comments in Dallas for a few months so I could go to his school. <laughs> Probably be the best best investment you could possibly make, Angie. Well, I have. You, you'd be surprised how, how far some people drive. You know, I have, I have them drive from all over Texas to come just take one, one session, you know. But uh, yeah. uh, they come from all over the country for my workshops, of course. Uh, Actually, I have more people coming from like Minneapolis and Atlanta than I actually have coming from Dallas. Well, there's that, you know, there's that old thing about uh, it's the, the consultants rule, right? They can't be smart enough if they're in our own town, but if they're in another town, they're smarter. The further away they are, the smarter they are. Yeah, I know. I know people that uh, buy, don't buy any art in Dallas, but they buy Dallas artists in New York. You know, it's yeah. bizarre. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Can you please tell what kind of erasers you're using other than the needed eraser? Well, uh, this one, 
is interesting. It's, it, I happen to like it because it doesn't leave much residue. Uh, and it's a boxy eraser. And it, and it comes square. But you see, I've cut the, you keep cutting it off with an X-Acto knife. And I really like this uh, eraser better than, uh, than uh, the kneaded eraser. Because the kneaded eraser, after a, a, a time, will pick up your... Um, you know, the, the uh, oil in your, in your hands. So, uh, and, you know, of course these, you know, these white, white guys, I mean, I just happen to like the black ones cause that looks dirty. So, I, you know, you think, you know, I just, I just like the black ones because uh, uh, they seem to work better. But uh, once again, uh, I do this kind of weird thing where I will go through and it's well, it makes of, it feel. It gives it energy when you do that. Well, it it's um, it, it it builds builds some patina to it, you know. Yeah. And and I'm allowing you know I'm allowing forms to to move out of uh, other forms. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, no, that's okay. You're talking a lot. But it's uh, it is this. Layer, kind of a layer, layering process that uh, that you're building this up kind of gradually, uh, and you know, this again is the Pippo stuff, which is is darker. Uh, you actually, I'm not doing it today, but uh, a lot of people buy these buy the Create a Color sets, uh, and they have dry and uh, oil based uh, chalks in them, and they will usually just use the dry chalks, but uh, the, I don't happen to have one available here, but the and you want to make sure that that ear overlaps the back of that head right there, because that those overlaps are what give you a, a, a dimension. And then here's here's what I'm calling the passage or passage, as we say in Texas. Uh, this, this kind of lets that go out over over that back edge a little bit. Um, and here I would find that cheekbone and I might have a little term create a little bit of a terminator line going back into there and his whole face is ruddier down here than his forehead and of course his nose except for that slight uh, highlight so i would come in now and probably if i was finishing up i would come in and use a harder chalk up in here that's a little too creamy i'm going to creamy. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna Soften it slightly with this. Did the, the question is, did the paper start as yellow or did you tone it yellow? No, it, it comes. This is called a, a, a Raffaello. Raff, Raff, <laughs> a Raffaello, really, but uh, Raffaello in Italian. These these little guys from uh, are uh, are from uh, Rembrandt and they're like little uh, micro sets and uh, uh, they come in various grays and uh, yeah, and so you can kind of still kind of feel like this is uh, in the range. Awesome. Well, Michael, why don't you come back on camera? I know there's a lot more you could do, but uh, come back on camera so everybody can meet you if they didn't see you. Sure. The uh, question was, do you ever use an electrical race eraser? You know, I have some. I haven't used them uh, uh, lately, but, but I, 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 do have, uh, I do have a couple of them at home. This is uh, just one of my, uh, one of my studios. <laughs> 
Well, Michael, thank you so much for being on today. I think we learned a lot. I know I did. And um, it was fun to see that come together and see how you, how, how all the different things you did to it to, uh, to kind of mess with it and give it that texture and that energy and that feel. So thank you so much. I am uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Realism Live. Have you got any idea what you're going to teach on Realism Live? Yes, on Realism Live, what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, you want me to look up? <laughs> on, on Realism Live, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to do a velatura. Uh, it's actually, I'm going to start with some of the sanguine uh, materials, but I'm going to work on a uh, panel, uh, a very, very smooth uh, linen panel. And uh, uh, velatura, I start out with is the sanguine, and then I build it up into a uh, uh, it's, it's really a way, way to do a monochromatic painting, but you're just using the one color uh -huh. uh, and, and then the one color plus white and it's all going on directly on the canvas. Uh, and uh, it's like the little one I picked up at the be very beginning that, that I held up uh, uh, when we were doing the tour. Uh, but I'm gonna do one you know, considerably larger than that. Uh, so, and I would do that from, from the beginning so you can see the whole, you know, obviously my whole system structure. Okay, terrific. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I want to encourage everybody to uh, look through the comments for Michael's websites and the, uh, and, and the school and all the different things that he's got going on. And, and also check out that, that video, uh, which is just fabulous, Michael. Thank you for doing that. We really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for being on today. And um, thumbs up and applause for Michael Mettler and, and get to Dallas and, and go to one of his workshops. I think you'll get a lot out of it. I know I would. I might just do that, Michael. I might see you yeah. up there soon. Great. Love to have you.